Okay, this is stats number five. Our goal in this uh, video, we're going to learn how to create a scatter plot, a picture like this, on our TI 83. We're going to find and interpret our values and understand correlation, both positive and negative, strong and weak. And then here's our particular data in this problem. I've given you a list of numbers that are the foot length of children uh, and the number of vocabulary words the child knows. So we're going to see if the size of a child's feet correlates with his vocabulary size. And then we're going to ask a question, does foot size cause vocabulary or vice versa? Did knowing a lot of words make your feet big? Does having big feet help you to have a large vocabulary? Now this is a scatter plot generated on Excel, but you may not have Excel handy, so we want to know how to do this on a TI-83 calculator. So I turn on my calculator and I press stats and I go to select edit, which is the first choice. And we're going to have L1 and L2. If you've lost your one L1 and L2, I have a separate video that shows how, how to put this in. Now you'll notice if you can read the data, it's a little hard to pick up the screen here, but I've typed in the data already for abbreviating the process. So if you need a moment, pause and type in this data now to practice along with this video. Now we press stat again. Well, actually what we want to do is go to second stat plot and go into the first one. Just hit enter. Make sure it's turned on and that the x values are coming from L1 and the y values are coming from L2. In more complicated problems, you may use other tables for your data than L1 or L2. You can use any of them you want. You just have to put the right ones in here to define your X and Y values. So it doesn't have to be L1 and L2, but commonly we'll use those. Now, a quick way to make a stat plot is to not worry about the window. You would have to pick X mins and X maxes that were around X min smaller than and X max bigger than this list of numbers and so on for the Ys. But there is a feature in your calculator called Zoom Stat, which makes this much quicker. I just hit that number and it'll simply pick X's and Y's that'll fit around this data. And it's already done so. So you can see on the calculator, it's not the clearest view, but you can see that it's produced the same uh, picture we're looking at over here. Now the next thing we want to do is do stats, calculate, and we're going to select linear regression. You may have done this in your Math 120 courses when you needed the equation of the line. What we're going to get is the best line. If we look at this data, we can kind of see a pattern. We see that as Foot size go up, vocabulary goes up. It's not perfect. There's randomness to this process, not a mathematical line. But we're going to actually find the best line through here. And in algebra, you're interested in the line. But now I'm interested in the R and R squared values. And those have come out down here. R is 0 0.80. Now an R value of 0 0.80, it's positive, so we have a positive correlation. That means as foot size increases, so does vocabulary. And 0 0.80 is quite strong. Whether or not how strong is strong in terms of R depends on the number of data points. But for our purposes and the small data sets we're going to use, R values go from R values can go from negative one to positive one. Negative one is perfect negative. So the data would actually be on a line sloped down. And likewise, positive one would be perfect positive. And then we'll say down to about negative 0.6. We'll call this pretty strong. And it's still negative over here. And the same thing for 0.6 to 1. We'll call that a strong positive. And then we'll go to negative 0.3. And I'm running out of room here. But you'll get the idea. Negative 0.3 to 0 0.6. 0 0.3 to 0.6. We'll call a weak correlation. <coughs> Excuse me. Allergies strike again. We'll call these weak. And they're associated positive and negative. And in between 0.3 and negative 0.3, we're going to say it's just too weak to call a correlation at all. That isn't mathematically 100% true. If you have a lot of data, Enough data, you can go to any numbers you want. You can go down to 0 0.01 could be a correlation if you had a million points of data. But this isn't the purpose of this class. We're just trying to understand correlation and data in general. So this will do for, our, for basics for now. So positive correlation, if they're positively rated, negative, negative. If it was a stronger correlation, the dots will be closer to the line, and a weaker correlation, they'll be further away. We could actually plot the line on our calculator. Press variables and statistics an equation and I can quickly make it jump in and graphing it'll add the line into the data so not far off from what I drew, drew just freehand guessing here and that's what the line looks like so we have established that foot size and vocabulary are definitely correlated there's a positive strong correlation between these two ideas so why is that why would children's foot size be you know correlated with their with the number of vocabulary words you know, if you cut their feet if you cut off a few toes are they starting to lose words if you want to have a kid with a big vocabulary, do you want to have like a big foot? 
So does one cause the other? Now this is an important point to take away. We Mathematically, we study correlation very easily. We've proven they're correlated, but we have no idea if one causes the other, vice versa, it could be the other way around, or a third factor. What we often call a confounding factor is influencing both of these together. And in this one, it is very clear what's going on if you think about it for a moment. Smaller foot sizes are younger children who know less words. So the correlation is actually going to be age. So sadly, you know, otherwise you could just uh, make sure you have a big foot kid and you have a great vocabulary, but it's not going to work that way. As children grow up, they learn more words and their feet get bigger. So we have a confounding factor that's, that's really generating this entire thing that we're seeing here, the correlation between vocabulary words and foot size.